guys, I'm Richard Holder and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to cover in detail the buildup of a 700 horsepower pump gas 454. And no, it's not a 454 big block Chevy. It's actually a 454 LS stroker motor. And not just any stroker motor, it's a cathedral port headed 454 stroker pump gas motor built by Brian Tooley Racing. Let's check it out. In this video, we're going to cover the buildup of a 700 horsepower pump gas 454 LS stroker combination. And this was basically one of the three times in my history that Brian has come to me and told me something. And I told him eh, that's never going to happen. So let's take a look back down memory lane here and I can tell you about those. The first one was way back. My buddy Jimmy Hiddle from HP Performance, I did all the turbo stuff with. He came to me and said, hey, you need to get together with this Brian Tooley guy. He has trick flow tools twisted wedge Ford heads that flow 300 plus CFM and he's made over 600 horsepower with them and I told him there's no way that anybody can do that. So naturally as we know from history yes that is possible and that's one of the examples where I was wrong about that. The next one was Brian Tooley, as you guys know, owned Total Engine Airflow when he was in the cylinder head business. Well, after he got out of that business, he came to me and said, hey, Richard, because by then we were good friends. And he said, Richard, I, I think I'm going to go into the spring business. What do you think about that? And I said, Brian, I think that that is a terrible idea. I think that you would be a small fry in a big business where there's lots of competition. I just think that that's not a good business model. So naturally, he has Brian Tooley racing now. So the important takeaway from that is if you come to me for business, advice you probably should not listen and then the last one was actually this buildup of this 454 he came to me and said you know I want to build a cool naturally aspirated big displacement LS combination for my Corvette so I'm going to build a 454 you know it has a good designation from the big block I like that and not only that it's going to be over 12 to 1 it's going to run on pump gas and it's going to have cathedral port heads and to top it off it's going to make 700 horsepower and once again not learning from the past I told him Brian that is not going to happen. I'd love to test it, but don't be disappointed when it doesn't make 700 horsepower. Naturally, I wouldn't be doing a video on a 700 horsepower pump gas 454 stroker if it didn't make 700 horsepower. So once again, that's strike three for Richard. Let's check it out. The first step in building a 700 horsepower 454 is actually to achieve the desired 454 cubic inches. In order to do this, Brian Tooley chose a factory aluminum LS7 block. And the reason that he chose the LS7 block is because it has a lot going for it. First of all, it was aluminum, obviously, to keep the weight down, but there are a lot of other factory aluminum blocks. What makes the LS7 block desirable for this buildup is the fact that it was already blessed with a couple of things. The first being a 4125 bore. Now, the factory 7 liter LS7 combined a 4125 bore with a 4 inch stroke, but Brian wanted even more displacement than that. The good thing about including the bore size of the aluminum LS7 block was that it also had longer sleeve lengths. The longer sleeve length than the other factory blocks allowed use of an even longer stroke. So Brian was able to install a complete Wiseco stroker assembly with the longer sleeve length. The block was obviously machined and also the machining included drilling and tapping the head bolt holes to allow the installation of half inch head studs. Now, in order to achieve the desired displacement, Brian installed a Wiseco stroker assembly, including a Ford Steel 4250 stroke crank, a set of K1 6125 H beam forge rods, and this was combined with a set of 4125 bore flat top forge Wiseco pistons that also included coated skirts. Now, the pistons had naturally valve relief to accept a big camshaft, because let's face it, you're not going to make 700 horsepower with a mild camshaft. So the valve reliefs allowed that installation. All the assembly was installed with a set of cleavite coated race bearings. And then the other modifications for the short block included... Um, you had to modify the windage tray. You had to, you had to step the windage tray down because you increased stroke length. And this required other problems because when you, when you fix one thing, it causes another issue. So when you move the uh, windage tray down away to, to allow for clearance for the stroker, you have to machine the pan. In this case, it was a stock C6 oil pan. Brian also installed a new oil pump. They did some porting on the pump to increase oil flow. And then once they clearanced the stock C6 oil pan for the windows tray, everything was installed together and ready for the power producers. 
Building a short block that displaces 454 cubic inches is still no guarantee that you're going to make 700 horsepower. That requires the right combination of camshaft, cylinder head, and intake manifold. So starting with the camshaft, the cam Brian chose for this 454 featured 660 lift, a 251-266 degree duration split, and 115 degree lobe separation angle. But as always with this combination, there's more to the story than that. The 660 lift required the use of 1.8 rockers. And not just any 1.8 rockers, Brian chose back then to use the factory LS7 rockers. And I know what you're thinking, Richard, how do you use a factory LS7 rocker with its specific mounting position for the LS7 head on a Cathedral Port 245 head? No problem. Just fill the existing hole, re-drill and tap a new position on the 245 head for use with that LS7 rocker. But that's not the whole story, as always. Brian also chose to use factory LS7 hydraulic roller lifters, but not just stock ones. He shimmed them so that they would effectively be short travel lifters from the factory LS7. But that's not the whole story yet. He also chose a set of hardened 3 8 push rods to make sure that all of the lift offered by the camshaft and the combination of that camshaft and the 1.8 ratio rocker was achieved at the valve. So you're looking to choose a cylinder head for your high horsepower, large displacement stroker LS. Naturally, you would think, hey, I should install a raised port CNC ported LS7 head or maybe a rec port large port CNC ported LS3 head, also a good choice. But no, not if you're Brian Tooley. He chose instead of those to top a large displacement high horsepower stroker combination with a cathedral port head, which might be why I said, hey, Brian, I don't think it's going to make that kind of power. But as we know, we should never listen to this guy. So he chose a set of TrickFlow 245 cathedral port heads for this 454. Now these came fully CNC ported, including the intake port, the exhaust port, and the combustion chamber, but he made a couple of extra modifications to these heads. And the modifications including a modified exhaust port, which they called the optional nitrous port, and that included a 50 degree uh, valve job on the exhaust to help uh, minimize over scavenging during overlap for the camshaft. He, Brian also specified a drop in exhaust valve size from 1.6 down to 1.58. This was combined with the 2100 intake valve used on the 245 head. The combination of all these modifications resulted in cathedral port heads that flowed 353 CFM at 600 valve lift. A pretty good amount for a cathedral port head and the exhaust flowed equally well 278 CFM or more than enough to produce the desired 700 horsepower. Before we get to the dyno results, we need to finish up a couple of interesting points on this 454 buildup. First of all, this thing was over 12 to 1. So with a 70cc chamber, a flat top piston, zero deck, 41,000 gasket, this motor was run on the engine dyno when I ran it at Westec on 91 octane at over 12 to 1. And Brian ran it in the car, drove it around on 93 octane. So it worked very successfully. And one of the reasons that he was able to do that, obviously the tuning is very important, but also the fact that this thing had softened chambers. So he was actually able to run this combination at that static compression with good timing to make this kind of power because of the softened chambers. Now the finishing touches on this combination also included a fast LSXR intake manifold and a matching 102 millimeter throttle body, but not just an off the shelf fast. Obviously, naturally, Brian took this thing apart, went in, port matched everything, smoothed it to try to optimize the power production of that combination on this motor. Obviously, that fast manifold was just never designed for a 700 horsepower 454, but it worked very well, providing a really good power curve. If you look at the torque curve when I post up the uh, finished power output of this combination, you can see not only did this thing have a really big peak power output over 700 horsepower, but the torque production was really impressive and making the combination when it's in the vehicle actually really fun to drive. So we had the fast manifold. We ran this thing with a set of LS3 injectors, but we had to jack the fuel pressure up to 75 PSI static and able in order to be able to supply the adequate fuel supply for this power level. The combination was run with a Mazira electric water pump the way that we normally do it a set of inch and seven eight stainless headers from American Racing. And maybe this combination might have benefited from a bigger set of headers, but having done lots of header tests, I normally don't see a big jump from inch and seven eighths to two inch on a lot of stuff. 
but those headers worked very well. We ran this thing, we broke it in first and ran it through a series of computer control break-in procedures, then changed the oil. We eventually put a 530 Lucas synthetic in it. We ran this thing with a combination of 29 degrees total timing. We had a timing curve built in, so it was lower down below the torque peak. We optimized the air fuel. We got that around 12.8 or 12.9, and that worked out very well. And once we did, I'll go ahead and put the dyno curve up here now, because this is the part that you've been waiting for. This 454 Stroker LS produced a peak of 704 horsepower at 6,400 RPM. So it wasn't doing it at the really high engine speed either. Lots of displacement and a big power, power output means that this thing also made a ton of torque. In this case, it made 630 foot-pounds of torque at 5,300 RPM. And you can see this thing bettered 600 foot-pounds of torque from 4,100 to 6,100 RPM. <laughs> that means that every time you step on the gas, you basically have 600 foot-pounds or more at your beck and call. So if you want to spin the tires or race somebody else or whatever you want to do for a naturally aspirated motor, this thing has kind of turbo LS power all without having boost. It's a good combination and it just goes to show you when Richards tells you that you can't do something, you probably can. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn in this buildup of the 700 horsepower 454 Stroker LS combination? Well, we learned the following thing. First of all, don't listen to Richard. If I tell you that you can't do something, you probably can, as Brian has learned now many times. But the important thing is, the takeaway from this is you can duplicate this kind of power if you follow along with this recipe. Now, you don't have to use an LS7 block. If you have one available, that's great. If not, I've also used sleeved LS6, LS2, LS3, even LS1 block. If you have the right sleeve length, you can put this kind of stroke in it. Obviously, make sure you're going to have to notch and clearance it for the extra stroke and for rod clearance. But once you do that, you can have a good 454 size short block or something even bigger, depending on how far you go in the bore. Now, if you add the right cylinder heads, in this case, Brian chose 245 trick flow heads, which he suitably modified, the right camshaft, a good intake manifold, and all of a sudden, you have a combination that that's making pretty serious power. Not only did it make a little over 700 horsepower, but if you look at the torque curve, way over 600 foot-pounds and not just in one spot, basically for a big, broad range. So it will be very useful on the street. Now all you have to do is take like a 300 shot of nitrous and boom, you're at 1,000 horsepower. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.